and we're recording. Uh, hello everyone. Today on the Tick Wrap Up, we'll have Tick News. Also, WWDC has finished. Let's recap it. Also today, a McDonald's restaurant has had a data breach. We will also have other topics. Let's roll the intro. Okay. Fast. Oh, welcome to the tech wrap up. Let's get into the tech news. Um, so, I'm doing the first article. So, yep. for the first article, we have Virgin Atlantic explores flying taxi partnership. So, Virgin Atlantic is exploring where they could launch a flying taxi service as part of a partnership with Bristol based Vertical Aerospace. So, what is the idea? Several companies have promoted the idea of autonomous flying taxis that could pick up passengers from rooftops and city centers and take them wherever they'd like to go. Virgin Atlantic's idea is slightly tamer. It's supposed that an Evitol aircraft could pick people up from cities such as Cambridge and fly them to a major airport such as London Heathrow. Is it feasible? Uh, vertical Aerospace President Michael uh, Servan... Ah, I can't pronounce it. Told BBC, there is a lot of hype in this market. They have taken the, the approach that is pushing the bounds of what is available in terms of technology, but not going beyond. With a 15 meter wingspan, the aircraft would have to fly to and from designated spots such as helipads or regional airports. As with any other aircraft, the VA X4 will be subjected to strict safety and regular regulatory checks. On Thursday, Vertical Aerospace announced plans for the company to be floated on the New York Stock Exchange after a merger with Broadstone and their deal valuing the company at $2.2 billion. Oh, that's the article. EA has been hacked, and the source code has been stolen. Hackers have stolen valuable information from major game publisher Electronic Arts, or EA, the company said. The attackers claim to have downloaded source code for games such as FIFA 21 and for the proprietary Frostbite game engine used as the base, f used as the base for many other high-profile gamers. News of the hack was first reported by news site Vice, which said some 780 gigabytes of data was stolen. EA says said no player data had been stolen in the breach. The firm is one of the largest com games companies in the world. It counts major series such as Battlefield, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, The Sims, and Titanfall. Among the titles it develops or publishes, as well as a vast array of annual sports games. No risk to players. We are investigating a recent incident of intrusion into our network where a limited amount of game source code and related tools were stolen, an EA spokesperson said in a statement. No player data was accessed and we have no reason to believe there is any risk to player privacy, she added. The company said it had already improved security and stated th that it did not expect an impact on our games or our businesses. Law enforcement has also been contacted. The network intrusion was not a ransomware attack and had happened recently, EA had added. Okay. Um, Alright. That's it for the tech news. I've just gone to the wrong document. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that was the tech news. Let's get into our first topic. WWDC has finished.
Okay. So at WWDC, there were multiple new operating systems announced. Mac OS Monterey, and that version number is 12. So Apple is not doing the, going to be doing 11 point something for the next version. Um, iOS 15 and iPad OS 15, Watch OS 8 and TV OS 15. Pretty sick. I didn't really, I didn't watch uh, WWDC uh, because I was kind of like watching anime at the time, but um. it was probably kind of interesting. I really liked uh, from what uh, Kaylin showed me of the um, guy, uh, the intro from the developers. Th that intro was actually quite funny in some bits. So, um, the slogan is high, uh, for macOS Monterey is high powered meets high everyone. There's a new Safari in, in, across the whole platform. Um, there's universal control, which lets you, um, which is for macOS and iPadOS, which lets you, if you just, um, Say this is a Mac book, and say that this is an iPad. You'd be able to just put them close to each other, and they would automatically connect if they're on the same iCloud account. And they would, it, you would be able to use the same mouse and keyboard for all of the devices, and you can connect more than just two devices. Which is amazing. Uh, what do you think about that, Fast? I I think there will be a way where someone could easily access someone's computer. And I just want to see it happen. I just want to, uh, to see someone just randomly access someone's computer through like a bug or just some white hat hacking. If, it, if, it's, yeah. if it's not white hat hacking, then it's probably going to be really bad, but... Yes. They have to make sure that it's flawless, because if there's any bugs, then it's going to be exploited like hell. Well, they're base testing it at the moment, so when they, when by the time it comes out, beta um, should be all good. So across the whole entire lineup, an update to FaceTime <coughs> is here. So share play it um, lets you like. Share your screen to your um, call, which um, and it acts. It's it's hard to explain, but if you watch WWDC, um, yeah. Exactly like screen sharing on Discord. Um, it's similar. So it's got it's a bit different though. So. It's also similar to like air playing a. You can just have music playing, or you can just have this particular video playing without sharing your whole entire screen. Um, spatial audio is also coming to. Mac uh, to um. Airpods. Uh, to, FaceTime. Oh. Um, I thought AirPods you, were getting spatial sound. You can only do it if you've got Airpo AirPods, though. That's the catch. Oh. So, um, you can also invite anybody to FaceTime, even if they're using a PC or an Android. And they've got this ugly picture here of a PC um, <coughs> using FaceTime um, just unplugged it um, so um, first you use a PC and I could actually send you a link and you could join a FaceTime call from your PC yep. 
So, yeah. In messages, there's an update to the shared uh, photos thing, where you can just swipe through them. In Safari, there's a new tab bar. Um, so there's not two separate bars, one for your tabs and one for the search bar. It's just a seamless bar. There's also tab groups in Safari. This is across the whole entire lineup. Um, And for the whole entire Apple lineup, there's Focus, which is like Do Not Disturb, but you can have like only work notifications when you're at work and only home notifications when you're at home. Um, there's also Quick Notes on iPad OS and Mac OS. Oh, and if you've got like a Mac Mini hooked up to your TV, it could actually act as an Apple TV because you can AirPlay from an iPhone or an iPad to your Mac. So it's quite good. Anything you want to say, Fast? Not much. I didn't really watch W W D C, so wouldn't know much. Yeah. All right. Um. And that wraps it up. Shortcuts well, comes. Is there else? There's a few more things. Shortcuts comes to Mac OS. Um, and there's new maps. Um, Watch OS got a new mindfulness feature. See if there's anything else. So there's quite a few new uh, good features. Um, and there's also a new Memoji on iOS. Oh, how great. Memojis are cool. Um, And in some places you can um, add your driver's license to the wallet app on your iPhone. Yeah, that's that pretty much is it. Um, so what's our next topic? All right, a McDonald's restaurant has had a cyber attack. I'll start this one off. Uh, I heard of this news like a bit ago. I didn't really, it's like a passing conversation thing. I don't really look at it that much, but it's pretty funny to hear. Just hearing like, oh yeah, McDonald's just, McDonald's just got a cyber attack. Like, how does that even ha happen? Did, did they ha hack like the, the ice cream machines? <laughs> like, I know they obviously probably the ice hacked, cream. Like, probably. The ice cream machines have a um, have a bug, <laughs> and they made um, what would be a weird flavored ice cream? They made uh. They made uh, computer tri uh, computer chip ice cream. Computer chip ice cream. Intel ice cream. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's a bit embarrassing. Um, poor McDonald's. Uh, and just talking about McDonald's, don't you f find it a bit weird when you get to McDonald's and you hear, aww? Have you heard that sound before? What? Well, something's similar to that. The no, I don't think I have. Ah! Okay. I think you're just going insane, Caleb. 
There's there's a weird sound that is in every McDonald's and it goes off every three uh, every three minutes. What are you counting? Um, it I don't count it. It's just an estimate. Anything else to add? No, not really. Just a bit embarrassing. Yeah. Okay. Windows 11 is expected to launch in a few weeks, despite Microsoft saying that Windows 10 could be the last version of Windows. So, back when Windows 10 was introduced, Microsoft themselves said that Windows 10 was meant to be the last version of Windows. So, on the 24th of June, there's meant to be a Microsoft event where they're going to announce the future of Windows. It could be just an update to Windows 10 or it could just be a totally new thing. I think it's probably going to be a totally new thing because there's a lot of things indicating the number 11. I mean, have they, have Microsoft personally stated that Windows 11 is coming out? They haven't actually stated it, but they've got a lot of hints. I mean, maybe people are just misinterpreting. I think it could be either way. Yeah, I, I agree. It's probably more likely to be Windows 11. But I think we should be, like, cautious that it could just be uh, Windows, another Windows 10 update or maybe something about uh, new apps on Windows. Some, uh, some uh, Maybe a big update to Windows 10, not necessarily a whole new thing. Because even though there are hints to it, maybe just a few, th a few things to keep in mind that it's not, it's not specifically going to. They didn't. Have, they haven't specifically stated it, so it's not going to be that. A hundred percent. You can't be a hundred percent sure that it's going to be that. Um. So there's two sides to it at the moment, and. Its code name is Sun Valley, so there's also some people saying that it could be called Windows Sun Valley and have a more Mac OS like approach to naming. Um, and also on the uh, window, on the Windows download page on the website, it says that support for Windows 10 will be um, dead in 2025 there will be no support uh, I've worded that completely incorrectly support for Windows 10 is meant to be ending in 2025 according to Microsoft's website and there's also meant to be some uh, some more um, a new look So, yeah. Is there anything that you want to add, Fast? No. All good. Shall we move on? Alright, next topic. The NVIDIA GPU sh uh, shortage is so bad that the GeForce GT 730 is making a comeback. So, I actually have, um, like, a really, really bad... NVIDIA GPU. It's yep. NVIDIA NVS 300. When is and it from? It is. I'm not quite sure. I could look for some type of date, but it is definitely very old. Uh, it is NVIDIA, but I. I'm so surprised that uh, the GeForce GT uh, Sim 30 is actually like purchasable. Like, actually, people have it. It's because it's, of it's the. It's really bad. And there's also all of these crypto miners trying to get in and buy them. 
as well. Thing is, you can only like, run like 50 frames on it. The I mean, it's not even good. Going back to your graphics card, the NVS 300 was um, released on January the 8th, 2011. Yeah, this thing's really old. Yeah. But, but uh, at the moment, um, Linus Tech Tips is actually releasing a few videos not even using a GPU because if you can't get your hands on one, Intel would be would have to be the choice because Intel has integrated graphics. Yeah, I think that's what Intel's kind of going at. Because as long as you get an Intel Core, you're guaranteed some type of graphics. But if you want to actually like a gaming rig, then you'd want to go for um, a graphics card. But the thing is that graphics cards have been inflated so much because so many... We've, we've had, like This generation has had like a fucking massive leap in the amount of people playing video games and... Uh, Obviously, cryptocurrency has had a massive leap. So the amount of um, graphics cards in the market and the demand has, like, skyrocketed. So Ooh, it's dude, kind of... Yeah, and it's, it's kind of not surprising that even the GeForce GT 730 is still uh, able to be purchased... Because of how many graphics cards people need. But yeah. that's just my take on it. Um, <clears throat> if you go AMD, um, you have to buy a GPU at the moment because the Ryzen, uh, the Zen 3 architecture, uh, with the Zen 3 architecture, there's no Zen 3 CPUs that have integrated APUs quite yet. So the GT730 has a 902 megahertz clock speed and 2 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, video RAM, VRAM. So And also, there's people that just go like that buy the that actually manage to get their hands on the um, new GPUs, and they sell them very overpriced scalpers. Anything else to say? I think that's it. Next topic. Chrome OS has overtaken Mac OS in OS market share. So last year, Chrome OS um, in when I think it was a quarter or something, um, it there were more Chrome OS devices being purchased than Mac, o, Mac OS devices. It's a bit sad, um, because Chrome OS is so bad. Some may say different. Chrome OS is actually getting better for touch screens, though. I think that's one of the advantages they have. The touch screens are actually pretty alright. They're... Um, Chrome OS tablets are actually better than Android tablets. Really? I haven't... I haven't used one, so I haven't... No. Well, that's from people's opinions from all around YouTube. Um...
think we should add another topic in because we're a bit early at the moment for I just got ice cream from my baby brother. Yum. Um. Was it was it computer chip ice cream? I'll check. I'll check. <laughs> uh, I I'd like to say something. Um. Okay. So there's a uh a comedian that just made a return from like. Uh, from like not making comedy for five years, and he made a special on Netflix. Um, and it's actually pretty good. I watched it, and it he called? made it all by in Inside by Bo Burnham. I showed you one of the songs. Welcome to the internet. Oh yeah, that one. Yeah, and he made it all in uh like. Uh, he made it all inside of his, uh, house, uh, using, like, editing, everything he did by himself, and wow. he produced the entire thing by himself. It's actually really impressive. It's, it's worth a watch. Okay, I'll have a look at it. Uh, is there anything else? I'm trying to have a look for something because our recording time is only 26 minutes at the moment. In the meantime I'll just play a bit of... In the meantime while I try and find a... Um, play a bit of WWDC on the screen and credit to Apple Okay, here's WWDC while we try and find something. Alright.
For me, the dub dub is the Super Bowl. You can feel the energy. It's like really deep insights of what, what it feels like the, being a developer. Really? <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, we open on black. The curtain slowly opens. Have a DeLorean on the stage. Team Cook get out of that DeLorean, showing the phone with a flex capacitor. I would probably not start there. I think is kind of geeky. <laughs> Are we gonna go again? So we open on black. Does it have to be black? Doesn't have to be black. Could, Could be, be yellow. yellow. Now my mind goes into like a cartoon. Imagine someone on their computer, you know, they have an idea and like they push like enter or some red button and it goes out to the world. Around the world. Yeah. You can feel the energy. It's like really deep insights of what, what it feels like the, being a developer. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, we open on black. The curtain slowly opens. Have a DeLorean on the stage. Team Cook get out of that DeLorean, showing the phone with a flex capacitor. I would probably not start there. I think it's kind of geeky. <laughs> Are we gonna go again? So we open on black. Does it have to be black? Doesn't have to be black. Could, Could be, be yellow. yellow. Now my mind goes into like a cartoon. Imagine someone on their computer, you know, they have an idea and like they push like enter or some red button and it goes out to the world. And then all of a sudden there's like millions of people around the globe that get to experience the thing that you've made. Are you actually able to do all this? Um. Maybe the title of the film should be Our Journey Into Tomorrow. I see a little girl in an endless white room. She meets Craig Federighi. Hi. But we don't see him. We just hear his voice. Not cool. Not cool. Not cool. Not cool. Now she's older and dressed for work. There has to be action at this point or like some sort of drama. She goes to work and discovers something catastrophic. Someone says, We have a bug. So she comes in and pounds on the keyboard. And the bug is fixed. Yeah, it's like a musical. Musical. Yeah, the bug, but a musical. We fixed the bug! We crushed the bug! We squished the bug! We made an app. It's the fun. But a Wait a minute. Why not make arena rock of dub dub? There wouldn't be any pyro usually, but I think why not? Pyro is fun. Do you think it would work? Uh, you won't know if you don't try. Good morning. And welcome to WWDC. It's wonderful to see so many familiar faces with us today. We're excited to share our latest technologies with you and with the incredible community of millions of Apple developers around the world. Your creativity and groundbreaking apps continue to deliver new and meaningful ways to enrich people's lives. We applaud the extraordinary work you've been able to do throughout this challenging time. Last year's WWDC was our most inclusive and most watched developer conference ever, with nearly 25 million viewers. It was exciting to have so many people join us, 
and to see the impact it had on new Apple developers as we broadened our audience, welcoming more people from more places around the world. We've continued to look for ways to help cultivate the next generation of developers with an emphasis on those underrepresented in technology. We host entrepreneur camps for black and female developers to foster the talents of future industry leaders. Our developer academies, including the newest in Detroit, prepare uh. the coders of tomorrow with valuable tools. And we're back with um, more topics. So, first, do you want to go ahead with? Oh uh, yeah. The next topic. Uh, so Android, Android. 12 was announced two weeks ago. So, so <coughs> Google released its first Android 12 public beta last month, so that's about two weeks ago. Um, so it brings a whole new design to Android with more rounded corners and <laughs> so Android 12 has a completely new design with a new um, what was it con called an Android where you um, like turn on and off your Wi-Fi and stuff. No idea what you're talking about. Oh, it's called the quick toggle menu. So, um, it's all rounded now. And, and being honest, it looks quite nice. I'm not an Android fan. So if we go into Google's website, um, we can have a look. So it's meant to be released in August? No, 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 that's when the fourth beta is meant to be released. Uh. So beta 4 is going to be released and then... So maybe September or something. Um, then they're going to release a candidate like a uh, candidate version and then they're going to re release final release a bit after that so I'm assuming September or October yeah around there so Okay, so let's go to the overview of the new features. So there's new widgets, there's new haptic effects, a new launch animation, new phone call animations, there's image rounded corner um, new rounded corners gesture navigation picture in picture improvements In fact, oh. 
you want to say anything about Android 12 first? Uh, no, not really. I don't really yeah. care that much about uh, Android releases or anything. Just talking about Android, um, iPhones get more updates than Androids because um, Androids are only supported for like three years, whereas the iPhone 6S has been supported for six years, so that's double the time. The iPhone 6S seems to be the longest supported iPhone ever. It's quite good. Um, so, yeah, let's move on to our next topic. The M1X MacBook Pros were meant to be announced at WWDC. So, there were meant to be new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros, but that did not happen. So it's meant to be launched in the second half of this year. Um, They predict on nine to five Mac. They predict that we won't get anything before November. And if we go to Mac World, So they're meant to have mini LED displays, like the one on the iPad Pro, 12.9 inch. There's, there's meant to be a MagSafe 3, so MagSafe returns. Yes, I love MagSafe. In fact, this MacBook Pro right here has MagSafe, because it's a 2011 one. And there's also going to be, they're also predicting that there's no longer going to be a touch bar, um, and up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. So yeah. Okay, first, is there anything you want to say? No, I just messaged you. Yeah. Okay, so thanks for watching. Alright, this is going to be available for, uh, this is going to be available on YouTube and soon to be Twitch. Remember to like, share this video with your friends and subscribe. Bye. Bye. See you next week for another more planned tech wrap up because we'll have more topics. Bye.